Nice to have you with us. It's Mansfield today on a Wednesday, and being a Wednesday, we take a look at things medical. We're joined by Dr. Vicky Skitter, who is a medical doctor, who is our resident medical doctor here on Mansfield today. Um, she will also be maybe zooming in other people for specialist advice as well, because uh, as I think it was uh, Lance Brogdon was telling me a while back, our advocate who was on yesterday, uh, he was saying that sometimes you need to uh, go to a GP first and then they need to refer you to a specialist. So we'll zoom in people from all over the place and get their specialist opinion as well. But we're really looking at the, the issues that are affecting everyday med medicine at this stage. So, Dr. Vicky, thank you very much for joining us. Nice thank to have you. you in the Mansfield Today studio. Uh, with, with the whole COVID issue doing the rounds, and I don't, really don't want to dwell too much on it, um, but with winter sort of on top of us now, right, um, people people are unsure of what to do. You know, you get a sniffle or you get a cough yeah. and you go, oh, it's COVID, yeah. um, where it may not be. Yes. Uh, how, how do we start identifying this? It's a, it's a very, it's a very, it's a hard question because that's what we sit with every day when we see our patients. Mm. They come in with symptoms of the cold or symptoms of flu or wow, I think I've got COVID and here we have to decide, okay, do we now worry? Do we test the person? Um, what do we say to them? So before 2019, December, before COVID really hit us, it was relatively easy to say, oh, you've got a cold or you've got flu maybe, and that's a problem. Now it's all, it uh, all overlaps. Mm. So it's a, it's a bit of a hard thing. So. Um, so you, you basically you're saying it's even hard for the doctors. It's very hard for us. Um, everyone's confused and you think, you know, they ask you and you, you don't really know. Mm. You don't really want to say to your patient, I don't know. But um, that's why it's so important in this time, in these times to, to phone the doctor or to go to the doctor and not just leave it. Yeah. Because of exposure to other people, basically. So if you say a person's got a cold, you might have a sniffly nose and sneezing, might not have a fever, um, feel a bit sore. When you talk about flu, they might have high fevers and rigors and body aches, feel awful. When it's COVID, it can be anything. Mm. So it's a very hard one. Um, are you seeing, because of this uncertainty that, that we, we are, we are living through, are you, are you starting to see a lot of stress-related problems coming out of that? A lot. Um, it's, a, it's a huge, huge problem. And um, I've seen males more so than females even, um, which, which is a new thing, because males don't often come to the doctor and complain about <laughs> stuff. But, um, uh, and it's hard to treat because the reason for the anxiety and stress is often financial. It's yeah. social as well, but often financial. And um, how do we treat that? Mm. Yeah. So we can support our patients and there's obviously medication sometimes you can give them, but um, it's, it's a problem socially. What do you do? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting that you say that, Dr. Vicky, because uh, a bloke that I know fairly well is in the property business, but he specializes in... Um, building clinics um, for specific purposes. And I didn't realize this. Uh, a rehabilitation center for, let's say, alcoholics has a very different spec to a rehabilitation center for drug addicts. Yeah. Um, and he said one of the biggest things being built now are rehabilitation centers for people who are being depressed, for yeah. depression. Mm. It's a huge problem and people must come and, you know, they must, they must come and see us. They must come and ask for help. And it's a huge problem, not even just in adults, in the, the children as well. 
you know, mm. and the kids don't get exposed to to social activities or sports activities, and yeah. they really take strain. Um, so it's something to think about. Um, the the flu jab itself. Let's move away from the COVID one now. Okay. The flu jab itself. Uh, have you found there's been an uptake on on that? Yeah, definitely. And I think it's very important for people not to just focus on the COVID vaccine, which is um, also another story. Um, but you know, to go for your flu jab, I think is very very important, especially this year. If you can prevent getting ill, um, prevent all that hype about do I have flu, do I have COVID, whatever, please have your flu vaccine. I think that's very important. And they are fairly easy to get, aren't they? I mean, you can go yeah, on they, to, no, to you your pharmacy. Go, yes, absolutely. Oh. They're very easy to get. Yeah. Um, um, okay, let's, let's come back to the, these vaccines and vaccinations on a, on a, on a broader level. Um, and I asked this question from also f as an informative one, but from a personal point of view, because about 12 years ago, I had, um, I was diagnosed with chronic lymphatic leukemia. And I went through uh, a period of, of, of uh, chemotherapy for that. Um, about oh, 18 months ago, um, I wasn't feeling well and I, f I went to my doctor um, who referred me to, to a hospital and they'd found that my platelet count had dropped radically. As a result of that, um, I had to go through very, various bits and pieces of treatment to try and build up the platelet count again. I was referred to a, 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 a specialist hematologist who said to me that there is a possibility, because they found a similar case in Cape Town, that the medication that I was put on, the chemotherapy medication that I was put on 12 years ago, could actually now be responsible for breaking down certain aspects of my immune system. So I think that's where a lot of the concern comes from with not only the flu jab, but also the COVID jab is people are saying, I don't know what's being put into my body. Yes. Yeah, that's such a common question and people are anxious. We've had so many phone calls um, from patients saying, especially the older people now that's getting their vaccine, should we have it? Um, will my medication that I'm on be a problem? And um, so on and so forth. But I really do think we should be positive about these um, inoculations or injections. We should have them. We really should. You're much more likely to die from COVID than from your injection. So I really do think it's very important that we take this up and try and get our injections if you can. Have you, have you had your injection yet? I have. Yeah. I have. Now, d just tell me something, because whenever I watch TV news or something and you see them giving these people this, this jab, everyone seems to be looking really tense and really scared to have the jab. Is it sore? No, it's not sore at all. <laughs> but it is strange because um, it's a bit of a whole procedure before you get it, you know. Um, and the nursing sister said to me, okay, doc, are you ready for this now? And I'm going, I don't know, but <laughs> give it to me. Um, and it was fine. But then afterwards, they, they watch you for 15 minutes. Yeah. You, know, you sit in this room with all the other people, socially distancing. And, uh, and you think, okay, now I've got it. What's going to happen to me now? It's, it's a bit scary, but you know, um, nothing happened. Um, nothing will happen, but it was... It was an experience. Yeah, I suppose it's always that fear of the unknown. Yes, I think this is the whole thing about COVID, is the unknown, is the fear of the unknown. But um, if I may say, people must just remember, because I remember in a hard lockdown when we were so quiet, even the doctors, the hospitals were, were dead, the doctors were quiet, everyone was so scared. To, to come to us or to mm. go to the hospital yeah. and people must must try not to do that. I mean, the hospitals now have COVID, um, COVID wards that, that separate it from the other wards. And you must realize that there's definitely the normal medical help is still out there. 
So don't leave things, you know, because you don't want to, to go to a hospital or go to a doctor. We are careful, there's procedures in place, and the normal illnesses still happen. Yeah, that, that, that is, uh, I think, what everyone forgets is that yeah. they're so wrapped up in this, this the, the COVID aspect of it that they, they forget that there are other illnesses that are still around yes. and that still need to be treated. Um, and that our facilities, our medical, medical facilities, have the protocols in place. Absolutely. Absolutely. So they must go. If there's, if there's one, or let's say two things that you would say we need to be attending to right now in view of what's happening with COVID. What, what are the two most important things? We've been told, you know, to, to self-isolate and to wear masks and to wash your hands and all the rest of it. If, if there are two or maybe three things that you say these are vitally important, what, what would you say they would be, Doctor? Um, I think to look for help early during any illness. I think don't feel that you're going to bug the doctor, bug us, you know, ask us, because if we think you need to go for a test, you must rather do it sooner than later. Mm -hmm. Now, if this test comes back positive, that's usually a bit of a disaster, more so socially because of uh, family issues, work issues. Um, and then people just need to realize, you know, you need to suck it up and, and stay at home. Um, I've had quite a few patients where there's one family member that tested positive and then three family members that were negative. And then they still want to know, well, can the other three that's negative still go out and work and do mm. their thing? Mm. And one must remember that it's possible that a third of our um, tests we, we miss, there's like false negatives, about a third of them, which is a bit scary. But anyway, yeah. so I always say if it looks like a duck and it cracks like a duck, then, you know, it's a duck. <laughs> so, so rather do the right thing. I yeah. know it might be, you know, it messes up your plans and your work stress and all of that, but rather, you know, stay at home and keep everybody else safe. Dr. Vicky, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming into the Mansfield Today studio. If you enjoyed this, then go to Mansfield today. That's all one word with the letter two, uh, number two in it, uh, dot com, and like it. And you can share it with your friends as well. We'll be back um, next week once again with Dr. Vicky. If you've got any medical issues, then uh, you can pop an email through to us at medical at mansfieldtoday.com and we'll pass those on to Dr. Vicky and we'll see if we can help you out with any issues that you may have concerns about. Until next time, thank you for joining us. Goodbye.